Chattanooga Times Free Press. Today we're at the Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga looking at the new Atlas seven passenger SUV. I have Michael Fetter here with me who's a manager at Volkswagen and he's going to give us a walk around of the car, show us some of the features and tell us all the exciting news about this new SUV that's about to drop at local dealerships. Michael, thanks for helping us. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, so this is your baby, huh? You've been working on this uh, product for quite a while, you were telling me. Yep, two years I've been spending a lot of time with the Atlas. So, um, all the way up to our market introduction here in a few weeks. Sure. So I know that when you say market introduction, folks can actually purchase this in about a month, right? At local dealerships. That's what we've been in. telling everybody spring or yeah. May. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they're ready. Are they already going out the door? Or is that yet? To come? We have. Uh, we are actually starting uh, shuttles. Yeah. I just say I thought uh, Scott was about to answer that question for us. But yeah, we're building the market introduction volume right now, uh, and they'll start shipping shortly. All right, well, well, let's do a walk around on the Atlas. Sure. Sure. First of all, it's, it's a striking, it's got a lot of presence to it. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the thought behind the exterior design. Yeah. So the yeah, exterior so design, uh, there was a show car that came out of, in 2013 called the Cross Blue, mm -hmm. and that had the basic uh, architecture of our SUV. Um, but at that time, if you go back and look at the photos from 2013, it didn't have a lot of features that made it into series production. There have been a lot of exciting upgrades even since then. So one of the things we like to point out is this bold accent line. That yeah, that, that character line is quite uh, amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> it follows the wheel arches and yep. gives it a real presence. Yep. Yeah. And it has the undercut to give it the shadow, to give it a real feel. Uh, also, if you look at the hood, uh, we have a lot of different feature lines that give it that wide, rugged appearance. Mm -hmm. um, we have the nice plastic wheel arches that make it not scratch up, keep it clean. Sure. With the wheels boldly placed in the, the wheel arches, sharp to the to the sides of the vehicle. Now, these 18s or 20s we're looking the at. The ones here. you're looking at here are 20 inch. They're part of the R-Line collection. So this is a this is a wheel that's part of an R-Line package. Excellent. Now, I know car makers spend a lot of time on the face of their products. Tell Excellent. us a little bit about the grill and what your design so, uh, elements uh, are there. A lot of people call this a two-bar grill because uh, it's got two solid horizontal lines, but they're backed up with a lot of character that gives it strength, gives it a rugged appearance. Mm -hmm. It also has LED headlights on all lines. It's basic to all vehicles. Only a few years ago, that was a big upgrade, just Absolutely. on high trends, and now even on the base models, we have that. It throws beautiful white light and draws very little electricity. Yeah, so it has cosmetic appeal, and, and in addition to that, doesn't it improve the actual sight lines? And Vis visibility, absolutely. Okay. It, uh, the line right up to the edge of the light is very sharp. Okay. And it's great at night. Now, it's obvious just looking at this, it's, it's, it's big. Um, much bigger than the Tour. Uh, uh, the other car that uh, Volkswagen has produced that, that follows the SUV. Architectures, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, tell us about the whole idea of so the part sizing SUVs for the American market. Uh, so, yeah, big vehicles are obviously big in America. Uh, we yeah. have a lot of space to travel. So we have a lot of family members, long uh, roads, traveling distances, mm -hmm. and so forth. So, the Touareg is a fantastic vehicle, but it is a two-row SUV. It's very sporty. It's four or five passengers. The Atlas is a seven-seat, a three-row SUV. And that's probably one of the most amazing features when you get in it. It's not yeah, it's a third true. row for children only. It is full six foot two adults can comfortably get in and out in the back seat, uh, which is very unusual for this for the midsize it really is. SUV. A lot of times that third row is just kind of a shelf. Exactly. That only really tiny kids. <laughs> exactly. Or it stays folded down all the time. You'll really find this one useful. We can get in and out and get the feel for it if you like. Oh sure. Well, first of all, let's talk about pricing a little bit. Where does this fall on the trim line? I think there's maybe five trims. There's five trims, absolutely. We start out in an S trim, which is the basic, uh, and it's the, the first entry point is $30,500 for the S model, front wheel drive, four cylinder turbo. Um, this particular one is an FEL, so it is the fourth or second from the top trim line, and this one uh, would be $39,000 for the SEL, but this particular model has the R-Line package three, on top of that, which brings it up to a little bit more. Okay. What, what are the elements of the R-Line? Is it they, just cosmetic? Or it's, it's, cosmetic or? it's cosmetic. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the R-Line package includes a new front fascia. Which you have this, this bold black accent, chrome bars in the lower grille. 
You also get special wheels, special lower door covers that are painted the body color, give it a, a change of shape. Um, there's an R-Line logo on the door and front fender, R-Line logo in the front grille. The rear fascia is special for the R-Line. It has a piano black insert in it that, that gives it a more aggressive appeal. Let's walk back there. Can we sure. do that? Yeah, there's a couple of things you can see the size. And the small overhangs. Yes, it's kind of blunt on both ends. Absolutely. It, yeah. it pushes the wheels, pushes the suspension out to the side, uh, which you'll see when you get inside. Really opens up the view. It's, it's very good. Right? Um, just looking in the back hatch, you have space behind the third row. Absolutely. It's, 19 it's cubic feet in the back. Yep. Yeah. And what about with the second row down? With the second row down, I believe, I'm going off the top of my head here, but I think it's 58 Whoa. cubic feet with the, oh, sorry, you said second row. All three rows, 96 cubic feet, 20% larger than the floor. 20 feet larger in cubic feet volume than the That's very significant. Is that a feature that you think will be a real selling point? I believe it will, especially just, just like us here in Chattanooga. We have so many fun activities. If you want to go biking, you could put your bicycle in You put your kayak in it. You could put all your camping stuff in it. Uh, you'll you'll see here in a minute. I'll open it all up, and it's really impressive. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay. So uh, this has the power hatch, so it opens up and sits nicely. Does it? Um, just while we're talking, does it have a fluid release at all? Not this one. The one you're going to drive. Okay. So it's an SEL Premium. It's a line above this. One. Gotcha. So I've actually got the back headrest up for for somebody sitting back here. But you were talking about space. So folding down. You can see third row down takes you up to, I think it's 64. I'm okay. Double check. That. Well, just just uh, to put things in context here, this is the volume of cargo room that you have with, five with still seats. five passengers yep. in the car. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's pretty amazing. It is. It is. And then if you want to see them all open, I'm going to slide this back a little bit and tilt it. And now you have an enormous volume. Okay. A lot of times we set it up like this, you can have somebody in the third row. You can still have six passengers or five oh. passengers and still carry your kayak. So you can skis. mix and match a little yep, bit yep. there. Tell Very me about flexible. the adjustability uh, of the second row, Michael. Um, so there's there's some fore and aft to that, right? Yep, yeah, it slides like a like a front row. Would. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's kind of one of the things I really like showing people is the flexibility. Um, I'm going to pull this third row back up, put it in place. And then I'll show you. Yeah, you look in the second row like here, kind of and you still have a bunch now. Of do you mind if I climb in there? Please do. Because that's not how I think they're going to be done. And, uh, and if you want to slide back, you just yeah. put a lever underneath it, just like you would in a front seat. Okay. So this uh, is two adults in comfort, and it looks like here, just because of the knee it's maybe perfect for a child if they're part of your party, uh, or even an adult for a short trip. True. But you can create leg room here, is yep. the point of your demonstration, Absolutely. Um, to accommodate just about um, anybody. Yep. Like, yep. Um, one nice thing, if you're sitting there, you can look and see you have your own HVAC controls. Yeah. Yeah. And there is two air conditioning and heating units in this vehicle, so it is friendly. truly three zones, left, right, and rear. Okay, so you can set temps back here. Absolutely. I have that problem in my family. My, my sons are always hot in the back seat. They can adjust their temp up here, and wife and I in the front seat can, uh, can make it comfortable for ourselves up there. And it goes to the third row. And the third too. row can do that There's too? There's a duct on the floor feeding okay. it and two ducts on each side. Can they set a temp there or they've capped it to this? This is, this is okay. the only temp for the, for the rear five. I'm noticing too this panoramic sunroof. Is ah. this a feature of the R-Line or all the SELs in above? Uh, it is available in SE Tech Plus. So the third level, fourth level, and fifth level all have that panoramic sunroof. That's becoming a really big feature in mm -hmm. SUVs and minivans these days. Um, I think people are used to that open air feeling that you get with these things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. really yeah. changes. Open it up? Yeah, why don't we open yep. it? Take a look. I assume there's, I mean, they will, I don't know. So there's, a, there's actually an air cover. Weather they have that. Yeah. 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 No, only this. I meant if you're facing the rear, it's flat. Yeah, yeah. And it's open. Yeah. 
And a little wind buffer up there too, so you don't get a lot of turbulence in here. Okay. Okay. I tell you what, do you want to uh, do a little demo of the telematics, maybe? If you'll climb in that side, I'll walk around to the other side. Okay. Although there's nothing. Security is very, very okay. picky, but there's nothing. There's no okay. problems here. I'm fine with it. Okay. We're just leaving the Volkswagen property now. We're going to take a test drive on the freeway for a little while, and uh, also there's a Enterprise South Loop up here. We're going to go around just to get a feel for the Dallas. I was noting before it's really quiet in the cabin. Nice isolation. Well, have you done any long trips in the Atlas so far? I drove it to Detroit, the Detroit Motor Show. Okay. Um, this is the for another vehicle that the Mr. Deese, the head of our brand Volkswagen, rode in it to, to the to the event. So I got to drive it up there. Uh, it was about a 10-hour straight shot. And I took a couple of breaks, and it was I still felt pretty good when yeah. I got there. So well, I'd say just being in here for two minutes, I've got a little sciatica problem in one of my legs and it's a little bit numb in the back but and seats are important to me these are very comfortable seats feel like they would be good for a long haul trip yeah. now this is a this version has the 3.6 liter v6 correct um, we were talking about that earlier when we were demoing this way to go over gotcha um you actually told me that uh, you think the four cylinder and the six cylinder will be roughly equal um, sales wise? I, I or think not sure. so. I guess yeah. you'll have to let the market sort that out. Exactly. There's a lot of people that want to be six, uh, but I think there's a lot of people that are going to be surprised about how much torque yeah. um, that the four cylinder has. And hopefully we get those uh, fuel economy. I forgot. Are we going north or south? I'm sorry for interrupting. We're going north. north. That's from this lane, I think, right? Yep. Mike, yeah, you oh, curl or run on. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, they, they both use the same eight-speed automatic, which gives you an advantage for taking off, um, and still has that high gear for uh, over-the-road, long-range fuel economy. Um, but the four-cylinder is surprisingly cool. Does it use premium gas? You know, I have not seen that label okay. yet, now that you mention it, um, because that was a big win for us with the Passat. We introduced a four-cylinder turbo that still ran on 87. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yep. That was Anymore in the marketplace, that's a little bump in price. You know, that mm -hmm. premium gas is a little bit more expensive. Yep. Uh, but unfortunately, I have not seen that information on the uh, the I think you told me earlier that you haven't published the thing. Yeah. 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 This is the uh, all 
double drop. Double drop. Yep. You've got a rotary selection right behind the shifter. You're in road mode now. Okay. When we go over to the Enterprise South, we can change to off-road mode and show you some of those features. Market specific, I live on Signal Mountain, and there's a lot of folks that are living on that fence that really enjoy the security of having that um, all season option. You know, to make their drive home more secure. <laughs> it's a big deal. We right. understand. Yeah, I looked up there in the wall. Did you? By the way, I love the new VW Alltrack. Is that the little wagon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great car. So you can feel the engine's not running? Yes, and you're the steering wheel is locked. Yeah. Exactly, but your uh, your auto off start-stop feature is, yes. is engaged. Okay, can so we disengage it? Yep, just push the button okay. one time, and it goes from there. It came back on, yep. gotcha. And that's, a, again, is a fuel-saving feature, right? Mm -hmm. And emissions. Ah, I got you. So the exit is right there. <laughs> Vehicles are built on MEV, correct? Correct. The MEV platform. They just Buzz. revealed a third iteration of the Buzz and the ID vehicles in New York Auto Show this week. I'm a big proponent of electric vehicles, and not just from an ecological standpoint, but from a performance standpoint. Oh, I think wow. a lot of people don't understand the potential <laughs> there. Full torque available to zero. Yeah. Describe it as like the hand of God in the back. <laughs> it just propels you along. Scott, don't let me miss the turn. Is it up here? No, uh, in about a mile, okay. we'll come around to that roundabout and yeah. just take the first exit into Enterprise South. At about that time, Mark, you can close it out if you want to just say, you know, okay, something. Sure.
shoot pictures. What a beauty. And that's one of the things I really liked putting out in the original reveal is that our A pillars, because we use treated steel, is it's much smaller than the competition. Yeah, now, like that you, is huge. yeah now that you mention that, I see that. Um, and that's a big deal, really, because um, you can lose sight lines in those A pillars. You can be coming around a corner and there could be somebody in your path that's almost invisible to you. So anything that shrinks those down really adds to the drivability. In fact, the visibility in all directions is good. I think our Facebook folks are going to leave us now. Thanks for coming along on this test drive with us, and we will um, see you in the newspaper. There will be a full report to Mars paper, Times Street Press, about the new outlook. Thanks, guys.